Hello, Gene the OK Boomer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Regular watchers of this vlog know that I usually focus on political events in the United States, social events, but I do sometimes go overseas. That's what I'm doing today. I occasionally want to look at what's happening around the world and uh, especially the Middle East, not least because we have uh, Iran just dedicated to eliminating the United States of America or the great Satan as they're known and then the little Satan, which would be Israel. But we and the Israelis have a common uh, goal. Well, you wouldn't know it from listening to Joe Biden. Joe Biden seems to be okay with Iran getting an atomic weapon. The Israelis are not so uh, happy about that ev eventuality. So there's a split right now. In fact, the Israelis are preparing to attack I Iran. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that they're getting... They're loading up the planes with bombs and everything and getting ready to go right now. What I mean is they're making the plans, they're rehearsing. And one of the things that they need is uh, refueling tankers. They have refueling planes so they can re there's a certain distance uh, from Israel to Iran. I would have thought that they would be okay overflying Saudi Arabia, for instance. If I were the Israelis, actually, I would make a deal with, with Bahrain, with the Emirates, to put an Israeli base or at least a station planes there because that's very close to Iran. Then you wouldn't need necessarily these um, refueling planes. Now, Israel does have these tankers, but the ones they have are 50 years old, I believe. They're old ones. I assume that they still function correctly, but they ordered, the Israelis did, modern tanker planes from the United States, from us, and the, well, the Israelis asked for an expedited delivery because of the increasing possibility that they would have to attack Iran and the Biden administration, as one could expect, they're dragging their feet. They're not speeding up the delivery of these tankers because uh, they don't want Israel. They don't want anything to... The Iranians, apparently, they're, they're even free to fire mortars and rockets and, and drones at our own troops because Biden won't retaliate because he doesn't want to mess up the negotiations for the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the, the, the nuke deal, the Iranian nuke deal. He won't do anything to jeopardize the negotiations, even though we're being humiliated. Because first of all, obviously, the Iranians are dragging their feet. They're just trying to run out the clock while they advance their nuclear weapons program. That's number one. But number two, we're not even in the same room with the Iranians, France, Germany, etc. They are in the same room sitting around a table. The United States, our representatives are in a hotel room off site. And uh, the well, the Iranians won't sit down with us. And Biden, instead of walking away, he, he's, uh, he's accepting it which is essentially allowing ourselves to be humiliated just as we were when we threw away a victory that we actually had in, in Afghanistan and walked away. You have to remember, we had not been, no American soldier had been killed for 18 months at the time that Biden had left. The, there were only 2,500 troops, uh, American soldiers, left in the country on Bagram Air Base, which was uh, an asset for us, an intelligence gathering asset, only an hour's flight from China. Obviously, great advantage to us. And Biden gave that up, uh, along with $85 billion of weapons. And we just sent, I think, is it $500 million? We sent tens of hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, quote unquote civilian aid to Afghanistan, even though they could, well, if they really needed the money, as somebody suggested, they could sell the $85 billion of weapons that we left behind. They wouldn't need any more money from us. But as usual, the progressive left of the Democratic Party pressured the Biden administration to, and he caved immediately as usual. 
They wanted the money to give in to Afghanistan because they hate America. They think we're a terrible country and every other country, no matter what they do, what they say, what they believe, they're better than the United States. But that's another subject. Don't want to get off on that. Let me get to the main subject today, which, again, is the Middle East. And, well, I'm going to make a point, uh, as I said in, in the title, an essential truth that every Everybody is missing or they, they understand, but they're not stating it, especially our friends on the left about the Middle East, about this whole idea of a, of a Palestinian state, of a, a two-state solution. But first, let me give you these couple of articles here. I'm going to read briefly from them. But let's go to the first one. No longer secret, Emirati astronaut presents Israeli flag taken to space before peace sign. Before peace sign, you'll see what that means in a moment. An Emirati astronaut, that would be the United Air Arab Emirates, one of the parties to the historic Abraham Accords that brought peace between a number of Arab countries, Muslim countries, and Israel. Full diplomatic relations. This is something for if we had a fair world, or if our friends on the left were fair, not just in the United States, but on the Nobel Peace Prize Committee. Trump should get the Nobel Peace Prize for the Abraham Accords because it's it's proven to be enormously successful, as we're going to see here. But, uh, well, that's another vlog for another day. Uh, back to the article. An Emirati astronaut took an Israeli flag to the International Space Station during his first mission two years ago. Most interesting is that the astronaut, Hazal al-Mansuri, took the flag with him months before the United Arab Emirates normalized ties with the Jewish state. So this was even before for the Abraham Accords, just showing the desire of these Arab countries to make peace with Israel. And the main obstacle is, as we're going to see, I'll give you a little preview of the point of this vlog, the West, Europe, United States, liberals on the left, they are the obstacle to Middle East peace because of their insistence on the two-state solution putting the idea of a Palestinian state ahead of all other considerations. Whereas, well, I'll get to that more later. Let me just get through these articles here. Anyways, getting back to this Emirati astronaut, he presented the flag two years later at the Israeli Pavilion Expo Dubai in 2020. So he took it to the International Space Station two, you know, months before the Abraham Accords. And then two years after that, he presented the flag at the Israeli Pavilion at Expo Dubai 2020. The Israelis were invited to this expo, and this astronaut presented the flag to them at that expo. Quote, I am happy to be here and present this Israeli flag to the people here and the Israeli public, unquote, the astronaut said. al Nuri, a member of the main crew to the International Space Station, was the youngest F-16 pilot in the United Arab Emirates Air Force when he spent eight days in space during his 2019 mission. The Israeli flag was among the flags of all the countries that participated in the expo that year. Quote, the flag was delivered to us with a dedication. Al-Mansuri came wearing his astronaut uniform and seemed excited. His visit shows how important he finds the UAE, United Arab Emirates, Israeli relations, unquote, said Josh Bendit, head of the Israel Pavilion at, the, at this expo. Al-Mansuri hopes to visit Israel next month, depending on whether or not there will be travel restrictions due to the pandemic. He is scheduled to be the guest of honor at the Israeli Space Agency at the International Conference. One more example of how peace and warm relations are breaking out in the Middle East between Israel and all these Arab countries. 
now that they are putting aside this whole idea of a Palestinian state. I think the only, well, the main holdout is Saudi Arabia, and I, I think their time is, is, is limited. They're eventually, I think, going to fall into place because they want to be the odd man out. I'm just guessing. I could be wrong. But here's a, a real bombshell. This is the one that is really big because the main impediment to a negotiated solution and the Israelis, frankly, they're being very generous by negotiating at all. They were attacked a number of times by the Arab countries and they, the Palestinians were among them and they, they lost. They, they're the losers in a war. It's not some kind of standoff or negotiation as between the United States and, say, Russia, the United States and, and China. They, they lost. It's a quote-unquote negotiation between the United States and Nazi Germany at the end of World War II and between the United States and Japan at the end of World War II. So in my book, the Israelis are being generous by even talking to them at all, but it's probably, or I'm sure it's partly because of the pressure they get from all these Western European countries not to. This whole matter would have been settled long ago if... Israel would just not be pressured to stop before victory. They should do what the United States did, World War II. Could you imagine if we had been forced to negotiate with uh, some kind of a, a solution with uh, Nazi uh, Germany and Imperial Japan? How absurd that would be, but that's essentially what they are demanding of Israel. Israel's a tiny state. So they're going along with it, but I wonder for how long. There's a conventional wisdom, at least among our friends on the left, that this is all about borders, the, the dispute, quote-unquote, dispute between uh, Israel and the Palestinians, but it's, it's not. It's about the Palestinians' refusal to recognize Jews as a people and Israel as a Jewish state and to end the conflict to... Uh, to admit, to acknowledge that any borders that are, are negotiated, those are the final borders. They're not a, an additional step on the way to, to the Palestinians destroying Israel, which is what they want to do. The Camp David Accords, they fell apart, not over borders. Uh, Arafat got 93%, I believe, of what he, he wanted. It fell apart because of a, of a clause at the end of the contract that said this settles all matters, this ends the conflict, uh, matter closed. He refused to sign with that, that clause in there. Dennis Ross, who was uh, a liaison officer, some, somebody in some official capacity at those negotiations uh, in the Clinton administration. He was there in an interview. He said that is exactly what happened. The Saudis said, uh, one Saudi in particular, uh, Prince Banadar, said who was, he's not in the government right now, I believe, but he was in the Saudi government at the time. And he he said that what uh, Arafat did was criminal uh, not, by not agreeing to that. Now we get to a gentleman named Abbas, Mansour Abbas, not to be confused with Mahmoud Abbas. Mahmoud Abbas is the apparent president for life of the Palestinian Authority. Mansour Abbas is the head of Ra'am. Now, what is Ra'am? Ra'am, well... That translates into, in English, that's United Arab List. Uh, in other words, it's uh, an Arab political party in Israel. And that is a point that our friends on the left and, and the, Israeli, uh, the Israel haters won't admit. They keep saying Israel apartheid and the, the Arabs, their, their Supreme Court justices, their, their mayors, 
They're on the police force, they're in the army, and they're in the government. Uh, so that's this party. Not only are they in the government, they are a key part of the Israeli government right now. If you don't know, Israel is a parliamentary system. They have their parliament is called the Knesset, but unlike say England, where they have a couple of major parties, very large parties, uh, conservatives and the, the Labor Party, the, or the Tories and the Labor Party. The, the conservatives, the Tories, were large enough that they were able to form the, the current government without any other party. That's not the case in Israel. In Israel, there are all these tiny parties. So this current election, I believe, was their fourth parliamentary election in, in four years because they, all these little parties, the, the number of votes they got, you have to put a coalition together in order to form a government, to have a, a governing majority. And they were unable to do that for, for three elections. And then the, the four election, fourth election, I'm sure it was the fourth election and not a fifth. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But they, they finally managed uh, this is a whole other st interesting story, but the the current prime minister, and he's only prime minister for two years, and then he, it's a rotating prime ministership with uh, the current foreign minister, but Naftali Bennett, his party got only six votes out of uh, 120 in uh, total in the Knesset. Uh, he got only six votes, but he's the prime minister because he was able to put a coalition together of all these parties. They have a one-seat majority. They're, they're just like, uh, well, it's like our, our Congress right now. We have a 50-50 Senate, but it's uh, essentially a one-seat majority because the vice president, the Democrat Kamala Harris, can break a tie. Well, that's the situation in Israel. The point being, as you're going to see in a moment, that the not only are Arabs in the, and Muslims in the Israeli government, they are a key part. They have the power to bring the government down, as you're going to see in a moment. Um, and, and that's why actually both sides courted the, the Arab parties, co uh, courted Mansour Abbas because he was for the first time, as you're going to see, willing to deal with the Jewish majority, with these other parties. In, until then, in the past, these parties, except I think maybe one exception a long time ago, they would just sit out the elections and say, we don't accept a, a Jewish state, Israel's not legitimate, we're not participating at all, and then that would allow, that, that allowed the right, um, uh, you know, the conservatives to win over and over and over again. But uh, this time, it's kind of a coalition with a couple of uh, uh, mostly left wing and then a few conservatives who are allied with the left wing out of just, it's, I guess you'd call it Netanyahu derangement syndrome. They hate Netanyahu, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the, the, the previous prime minister, so much that they were willing to ally with the left to, um, to defeat him. And now let's get to this headline. This is real bombshell news. It's having a big impact, especially among the Palestinians and the Palestinian Authority. And Gaza, this came out just a few days ago. Israel is a Jewish state and will remain so. Ra'am's Abbas. This is Mansour Abbas. He is saying, well, quote, the state of Israel was born as a Jewish state and it will remain one, unquote. Ra'am, United Arab List leader Mansour Abbas said on Tuesday at a conference of the Hebrew economic newspaper Globes. The statement by Abbas in an interview with Channel 12 analyst Mohammed Magdali, and notice that also this is an Israeli TV channel's uh, Mohammed Magdali obviously is an Arab, Israeli Arab. So they're they're on the air. They're they're commentators in uh, in Israeli media. So uh, take that, uh, you apartheid Israel uh, haters or apartheid accusing. Israel haters. Anyways, uh, analyst Mohammed Magdali was con the statement by Abbas in an interview with Channel 12 analyst Mohammed Magdali was considered historic because it is very different from the view of Arab parties until now. As I've been saying, Abbas made a similar statement last month in Arabic to the Cool Al Arab media outlet. 
And now we get to the, uh, well, this reiterates a point I made a, a moment ago. Meanwhile, Interior Minister Ayelet Shaked from Yamina, that means right, that is the very conservative party that uh, allied with the, the left. Uh, that's Naftali uh, Bennett's party. Anyways, uh, and Ra'am faction had Walid Taha, so Ra'am, again, this is Mansour Abbas's party, the Arab party in the Israeli government. Uh, meanwhile, Interior Minister Ayelet Shaked and Ra'am faction head Walid Taha met for the first time in weeks late Tuesday night in an effort to resolve their differences. Taha has been boycotting votes in the Knesset plenum to protest statements Shaked has made about his bill, which would hook up more than 50,000 illegally built Arab homes in, to the national electricity grid. With this is the important part. With a thin majority, the coalition cannot handle his boycott, continuing to Wednesday's vote in the plenum. Ra'am MK, that would be member of Knesset, that's the Israeli equivalent of the British member of Parliament. Ra'am MK Mazen Ganayim threatened to bring about the end of the coalition over the bill on Tuesday. In other words, the, this Arab party has the power to bring down the entire Israeli government and force another election. So again, take that. Those of you, you, you is real haters, you anti-Zionists, which is a code word for anti-Semites, who keep throwing out this term. Uh, and actually, there was a, an NGO, non-governmental organization, that, that severely chastised these people who use this term, saying there's no apartheid in Israel, and it, it, it's... It's disgusting to compare it with the actual apartheid that existed in South Africa. But anyways, the Israeli Arabs have power in Israel, and it came about recently, and it came about because of their willingness to participate in the Israeli government. And this brings me now to the point of this whole vlog, which is this, this emphasis on a Palestinian state and putting, well, you could, maybe I can find the quote. If I can, I'll put it up. Uh, John Kerry saying that there are people who say that peace is possible in the, in the Middle East between Israel and these other countries without first solving the, uh, resolving the, the Palestinian-Israel problem, that people who say that, he, he said, no, 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 that exact words, no, 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 that's not going to happen. There will be no separate peace between Israel and the Arab world. I want to make that very clear to all of you. I've heard several prominent politicians in Israel sometimes saying, well, the Arab world's in a different place now. We just have to reach out to them and we can work some things with the Arab world and we'll deal with the Palestinians. No, 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 and no. I can tell you that reaffirmed even in the last week as I have talked to leaders of the Arab community. There will be no advance and separate peace with the Arab world without the Palestinian process and Palestinian peace. Everybody needs to understand that. Well, it is happening, and that's another reason I, I imagine why the, the left hates Trump, if I can do a little aside, because it puts his whole, puts their whole narrative to, to shame. He was right. They were wrong. The Palestinians can be put on the back burner. The Arabs themselves, and this is the point, the Arabs themselves are fed up with the Palestinian Arabs. And they are Arabs. This idea of a Palestinian people, that came about in 19, around 1973, 1974. This is a whole other vlog, but that during the the years of the British mandate when the term Palestinians was used that included Jews too it was a it was all residents of the Palestinian mandate the British mandate and it was inhabitants it wasn't a people obviously Arabs and Jews are separate peoples well except that a lot of the Palestinians won't admit that they they say the Palestinians a people created in the 1970s they're a people the Jews who have been a people for 3,000 years they're not a people that that again is the main problem but what I want to get to is I was referring to 
John Kerry, and I keep digressing from my final point. The point is this. Let me get to it finally. This whole idea of a Palestinian state and a two-state solution is a Western project, just like the JCPOA. These nuclear uh, negotiations. What Middle, East, what Middle Eastern con country is at these negotiations? The Israelis certainly are not sitting at the table. We're not even sitting at the table getting back to us again. Just to emphasize once again how humiliated we are with uh, Biden as president. Uh, we're sitting in a separate hotel. But getting back to, to the Israelis, they, they are not at the table. The Saudis are not at the table. The Emirates are not at the table. Nobody who is the Jordanians, the Egyptians, nobody who actually lives in the area, nobody who is most concerned about an, uh, an, Ira an Iranian nuclear weapon is at the table. This is a Western project. And again, that's the same thing with the Palestinians. The, this Palestinian issue, the Arabs have moved past that. And the Israelis, they have moved past that. They are making peace without the Palestinians. And this is what our friends on the left and our European friends have to understand, that Peace will not come through for the whole Middle East. Well, you have to get rid of the Iranian regime, obviously, that's, but that's another subject. But it will, you won't see this Israeli-Palestinian peace until all the other countries have made peace, or at least these other countries. The Palestinians have to be the last ones. They have to have no enablers in the Middle East and in the West. If the Europeans would stop propping, propping them up, if we would stop propping them up and just go on without them, eventually they would have no choice but to make peace. But as long as they can hold out this hope of destroying Israel, as long as the, there is one uh, country anywhere that will, will humor them, uh, you won't have peace. It's that simple. But again, my point is this is a Western European project. It has nothing to do with the Middle East. We should just walk away from it, all of us in the West, and, and leave it to them. Leave it to them. And uh, I guess that's the vlog for this week. It was a pretty long one, but remember, I used to do these every day. Now I only do them every week, so I, I think I have a little freedom to go a little longer. And I hope to you know, come back next week. Thanks, as always, for watching. I appreciate the time that you spend with me. If you have any comments, there's a comment section below the vlog where you can put questions, also suggestions for future topics. I would love to know what you'd like me to talk about, and then I would talk about things that you, you want me to talk about. And you could subscribe. I love getting new subscribers. And you could visit my music uh, website. I do original music. I'm going to put a link in the description. But most of all, did I say subscribe? Yeah, you could subscribe. Oh, share the video with anybody you think would also like it. And finally, come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. Look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.